Ja, hello and welcome to this tutorial by mamoworld.com. My name is Matthias and today I want to show you how to easily modify properties with lots of keyframes in After Effects. So here you can take a look at any, the animation I've prepared so far. We have this ball animating here and it already is a pretty nice bouncing animation, but it really does not fit the ground here, yeah? because the ground has this step and how can we modify it. As you can see, the position property has here lots of keyframes and this makes a manual um, uh, correction of all of this pretty complicated. So for example, if I go to this point and say, I just want to have the ball here a bit higher like this, you can see that I only modify this one individual keyframe and I would need to do this for all of the keyframes and this is pretty tedious. Um, and so what we do instead is we use the tool key tweak. We go to window where you find key tweak once you have it uh, installed, you find key tweak at AE scripts among the Marmo World tools, it's a name your own price tool, which means you can decide I, I prefer to pay nothing because maybe I don't use it for commercial work. Or you can say, well, I'm really grateful that uh, Matthias developed this tool and uh, I uh, spent like $10 on it, for example. Okay, so how is this tool working? It actually is very powerful and has different modes how you can use it. Today we are going to focus on this local mode here, which is all we need. You can also switch here to the global mode mode that I'm going to cover in a different tutorial. So let's go back to this local mode. And the main idea is that with these arrows here, you modify all keyframes in the work area simultaneously. This means if you say, for example, I want to start the modification here, you jump with the beginning of the work area to here. And now let's say until the end of the composition, what do you want to change? So now with these arrows here, you can move all the keyframes here in the work area in, in all directions and the number in the middle tells you how much. So exa for example, let's say we want to move them 200 pixels up. Yeah? And before I click here, we choose how exactly all the keyframes in the work area should be affected. So the most easy thing we could do is to say work area constant, which means all are moved by exactly the same amount. So if I click here, you can see that all these keyframes moved 200 pixels up. Yeah, which means we have until here the original animation and now from this point on, Boeing jumps 200 pixels up and, and stays above there. This is not exactly what we need, so I undo this, undo key tweak. What we actually want is like all these keyframes here should move 200 pixels, but it should not be such an abrupt change yeah? because we want to actually start already here in uh, like step by step uh, introducing this change yeah from this point so during this one uh, bounce here yeah during this region the the change should be faded in so therefore we say work area fade in and it fades in from the beginning of the work area to the current time indicator which means we set the beginning of the work area here and the current time indicator we place it here where the maximum amount of change should happen. Yeah? So if we now click here, you can see it moved those here 200 pixels up, but here this entire region also got modified. Yeah, I undo it again, such as you can see what happens. You can see all of them also got raised. Yeah? I click again here, plus 200. All of them also got raised, but step by step incrementally. It's like fading in of this entire change. Yeah? It's like from here to here, more and more, it's like this this point here was moved 200 pixels, this here in the middle maybe just 100 pixels, and this here maybe just 50, and here maybe 150, and so on. It's like in fading this f uh, change in, which makes it pretty powerful, so you can modify your animation uh, pretty much. So 200 was actually a little bit too much, so let's quickly undo this. And uh, try it again with maybe just 100. 100 is almost good. If we look closely, it's not yet perfect. So we can, by the way, this wheel and this wheel have exactly the same functionality. It's just like you can keep two numbers here for your convenience. Let's say we enter here 10 pixels and we click it again. So we moved it an additional 10 pixels up and this looks pretty good. Yeah, if we want to be very accurate, we can also say, well, I want to move it one pixel down again and again one pixel down. And now we have exactly uh, what what we wanted to have. So you can also use this movement here several times 
And if we now preview the entire animation, we can say it was pretty easy to uh, adjust this entire thing. Yeah. Um, instead of just fading the change in, change in, you can also just fade it out. Yeah. You can also just modify the current frame, which I think most of the time you don't need. You can also fade it in and out simultaneously. And when do you need this? So maybe let's again go back to the original. So I undo my different key tweak moves here. So now we are back to our original move. And let me also delete here this part of the ground. Let's say our ground looks like this. And we just want this one bounce happening here. This one should be higher. Yeah? So we can go to the position of the ball and say, well, this point where it's actually bouncing. Here I want to have most of the change. Yeah? And this change should only go until here, where it bounces the next time. So we set here the end of our work area. You can, by the way, also do this by clicking the N key. Yeah? Um, and we go here where the previous bounce is and click B key to set the beginning of the work area. So this means from here to here we want to change our animation. And here where it bounces, this time, here we want to have the maximum effect. Yeah? So let's like, before this we gradually fade in the change and after this we gradually fade it out. And we wanted to have 100 and a little bit more than 100. I think 12 was what we, which, what we moved before. Or, oh no, just 8, right? First we moved it 10 up and then 2 down again. So we just move it by 8. And now it fits perfectly. Yeah, and so now we modified our animation such that it perfectly bounced and just this one bounce here is raised. Yeah, and simultaneously, similarly, you can also say, like, oh, maybe I want actually this bounce here to just be a bit higher. So you can say set here at this place the, uh, the end of the work area, N, set at the beginning of this bounce, uh, B, beginning. Now we just modify this one bounce. Again, we want to fade the change in and out. And at the highest point, which is here, yeah, here we want to have maximum effect. And we say we just want to have this bounce like 30 pixels higher. Yeah, Let me just move here my cursor a bit, such that you can better see what's going on, like this. So we've set the work area from here to here, and this is our maximum point. And with fade in and out, we say move 30 pixels. And now you can see that this bounce was just a little bit raised. Yeah, Let me undo again. Undo, now it's lower. I redo the key tweak. You can see th this bounce was just increased a little bit. So very convenient ways uh, to, to adjust keyframes. And this is, by the way, not just working with position keyframes, but with any 2D uh, values. Yeah? For, for other things than 2D, you can still lose, use a global, mars, uh, global mode. But here, this work area thing with these arrows. And obviously, you cannot just move stuff up but you can also move everything to the left or to the right. Yeah, so if you want to move the entire animation to the right, let's say we just say work area constant and click here to the right. And now you can see all keyframes have been moved to the right, for example. Okay, I hope this gives you an idea of how to uh, work with a uh, key tweak on properties with lots of keyframes. Now I have one additional extra tip for you, and this is how I actually created this animation before I started the tutorial. Um, this is, you can see all these keyframes. I didn't really create them by hand. This is created by an expression that I later baked into keyframes. And this expression is actually created with eye expressions. So let me uh, quickly show you this tool. Eye expression version 2 is a currently available uh, version, which is also available at AE Scripts. Eye expressions is a collection of expressions that come with uh, intuitive user interfaces. Actually, we have over 120 expressions, eye expressions so far in the library. And inside of the physics simulations, you find uh, the real time, so these compute really fast, the throw 2D. Let's throw things around uh, in 2D space. Here you've got a description and you click OK. Um, and the idea of this is really simple. So let me get back to deleting all those keyframes here. So we have no animation at all except for, for the rotation, which is still keyframed here. And um, so all you need to do is to specify a ground height. Yeah? And for me, the ground should be here. 
And let me see, the position of the ball is now at y equals 800. So our ground is at 800. And now we apply this to the position. And you can see the number becomes red, which means um, the ball of the expression is applied. And currently nothing seems to happen. But now if we say, okay, we raise here the ball to another level, now you can see that it automatically starts bouncing. Yeah? So if we play this through, you can see this is pretty nice. You can also say, I want it to be more elastic. Let's say like 80% elastic and apply it again. And if we play it through now, you can see that now it is bouncing much more. Now you say, okay, it's bouncing, but it's not really flying. And well, also it's not really looking like somebody throws the ball, although this here is called throw 2D. Well, and here the following uh, is what you have to do. And this is really super easy. We literally keyframe a throw movement to give the ball a start direction and a start speed. Let's say we give set here a keyframe. And now let me zoom in a bit a bit and so we go here one or a few frames further and we just move it a little bit yeah, it's like we have keyframed this little movement and now the expression automatically continues this movement so you can see it now creates this nice uh, bouncing ball animation yeah. and now you can really vary this you can say okay let's actually throw it a bit faster so I push it more to the right as you can see this is a fast movement you can see now it flies really far yeah. and you can also see this really acts in real time oops I accidentally scaled it so let's say I want to throw it on the br on the ground for example so I make it this downwards movement Bam, now it bounces really fast because I have thrown it really fast. Yeah, So you can see you can really have a lot of fun uh, with these kinds of animations. And uh, so this is a really intuitive way to create any kind of uh, throwing or bouncing ball animations. You can throw titles in stuff like this. And again, this is now expression-based and uh, you have lots of parameters like f physics parameters, uh, gravity and stuff like this. But once you feel like I need to do more, uh, to have more control to, to modify it beyond the abilities that this uh, expression offers you, you can say, well, this is in general what I like to continue working with. So I just select the property and click here on bake. And once I do this, you can see now it gives me all the keyframes from the animation. And now this is something I can, for example, continue modifying with key tweak. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. My name is Matthias uh, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you learned how to modify properties with lots of keyframes with the help of key tweak and also got this little insight in one of the many expressions that are part of the iExpressions tool. Okay, that's it from my part. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial.